Hey there and welcome inside Studio 34. I am Frank Sample with the Fantasy Sports Network and we're getting you ready for the fantasy basketball season, specifically head-to-head -head category leagues. Now if you need a refresher on which categories we play with, there are nine categories. It's points, rebounds, assists, three-pointers made, field goal percentage, free throw percentage, steals, blocks, and turnovers. A term that you're going to hear a lot when talking about fantasy basketball category leagues is punting categories. What exactly is punting categories? Basically, in fantasy basketball category leagues, you just need to win more categories on a weekly basis than your opposition. So if you choose to just punt or give up two categories on a weekly basis, let's just say free throw percentage and turnovers, because those are probably the two easiest categories to punt then you're gonna focus in the rest of your team on trying to win the rest of the seven categories. Again, you don't need to win 9-0 every single week. You just need to win more categories than your opposition. So let's start there with punting. When I go into my draft, do I already have an idea of which categories I want to punt? I'll just say right off the bat, turnovers. That's the category, look, the best players have the ball in their hands the most, and they're gonna turn the ball over the most. So am I avoiding players that are more turnover prone than the others? Look, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, they turn the ball over the most because they have the ball in their hands the most, but they're also the best players in the NBA. So turnovers is the one category where, regardless, I'm always punting that category. Now, for the rest of the draft, I'm kind of letting my team decide which categories I should punt. So the first three rounds, you're gonna take the best player available. If it just so happens that Andre Drummond is the best player available in the third round, then you're probably going to punt free throw percentage. Don't get me wrong, Andre Drummond made great strides last year, over 60% in the free throw department, but you're still probably going to punt that category because he shoots 60% from the free throw line. So. I wouldn't say go into your draft with a specific mindset that I'm going to punt this category unless it's turnovers uh, and kind of let the draft play out for you. Uh, take the best players available early on and then if it turns out that you're low and field goal percentage three or four rounds into your draft, then maybe just continue to punt that category. But honestly, we would never recommend draft, uh, punting more than two categories within your head-to-head -head category draft because then you just put yourself at too much of a disadvantage. The next talking point for head-to-head -head category leagues is knowing the category specialist. And this comes into play very much so in the draft and throughout the season because throughout the draft, you might look at your team and realize, I need three pointers late in the draft, I need rebounds late in the draft, or I need blocks, or I need steals, so on and so forth. So before your draft, we would recommend, you know, writing down a few players that you can get later on that specialize in specific stat categories, whether it's points, three pointers. Again, you just want to know who your category specialists are. And that's also gonna help you with your in-season research too, because when setting your lineups each week, you'll realize, all right, maybe last week I lost the blocks category. I need to pick someone up who's gonna help me in the blocks department. So the second talking point, again, just make sure you know those category specialists. And finally, when it comes to daily lineups and daily transactions leagues, just make sure that you take advantage of using those daily transactions. For example, early on in the week, if you want to pick up a player who has a back-to-back, -back, you do that, and then later on in the week, you pick up a different player who also is playing a back-to-back, -back, just so you can kind of manipulate your ad drops uh, on a daily schedule, uh, because that's what they're there for. If you play in a daily league, you want to be able to make those uh, moves every single day, both in your lineup and uh, on the waiver wire with ads and drops. So just make sure you know those three things. When it comes to punting categories within the draft, know your category specialist throughout the draft and in season, and make sure you take advantage of your daily moves throughout the season, assuming that you play in a daily league. So there it is, you have the strategy part of fantasy basketball down. Just make sure to stay tuned to the Fantasy Sports Network and NBA.com Fantasy as we let you know which players you should be drafting, which players you should be avoiding, and so much more. Thank you for watching, I'm Frank Stample. Good luck, everybody.